Hey, this is Kirk Hilliard. Trusty Bird, it's the Kirk and Bird Show. And yo, yo, we are here. We are here. We just finished the state semifinals. And now we're going to review those results and games. We're going to preview the state finals, all classes, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we got a special guest with us today. Y'all called for it. He asked for it. And we got Dustin Johnson here, former Phantom great Norfolk State and just a bomb trainer. Seven, welcome to the show, Dustin. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? All right. All right. Dustin is very shy. He does not like to talk. Not very opinionated. Those female nope. scouts. That's the way we are. Yeah. 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 And he would always tell you that uh, the best team in the PD is Bethel. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just messing. <laughs> Dustin, I thought you were going to go away after that. Hey, look, we also got Jay Golson. I'm trying to stay focused. I'm trying to stay focused. Okay, okay. Hey, look, I, I'm trying to throw you off your game, man. Look, uh, it's nah, a, look, look at this now. Look at this. Of this group, of course, Dustin Phoebus is here. Jay Golson's Freedom Eagles are still playing. He's the voice of Freedom Football. They're defending state champions. The former Potomac uh, high school football star, and his squad is still alive. Welcome to the show, Jay. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Now, how did this happen? Jason Sterling, also, his team is still alive. Jason Sterling, Dinwiddie grad, awesome wide receiver when he played there. Son played for Stonebridge, and he knows a lot about Stonebridge football, but also all of the teams around the state because this dude does his research. He's smart. JMU grad. Welcome to the show, Jason. Thanks, Rusty. Appreciate you guys having me on as usual. Oh, yeah. And, of course, Kirk and Dustin. Um Phoebus Phantoms. Uh, look, uh, we're gonna we're gonna get into this real quick. Uh, Kirk, tell people where they can find us. Yes, sir. Everybody, please subscribe to us on YouTube. We're getting a nice steady stream of subscribers. All you players, please do us a favor. Follow us on Twitter at the Kirk and Bird. Um, you can find our podcast on all of the various platforms to listen to it. Uh, just audio. Just uh, look up the Kirk and Bird. And then uh, we want to promo the 703-540 uh, Facebook um, Nova High School sports page. Uh, we're trying to create something similar to Hampton Roads and Prince William for Loudon and uh, Fairfax and Arlington. So make sure you check that out. All right. And King and the 540 Central. And, and I'm sorry, the 540. We've got... Uh, Christian Abrams down in uh, uh, Stafford. Stafford. Yep, knows the um, Fredericksburg area well. Uh, King George and, you know, the Cortland, those teams down there in Spotsylvania. So, uh, yeah. Um, But, yeah, the more you support us, the more information we have. And before we jump in, Rusty, I'm just going to say that Hoops is coming up. I was at a game last week. I saw South Lakes play Woodson, two great teams up here. And uh, we are going to be transitioning to basketball real soon. Okay, good stuff. Um, but that also reminds me that uh, Dustin, go ahead and promote what you do, bro. Let people know what you do, where they can find you. Um, Free for conditioning coach, the trainer of all sports. You know, uh, high performance athletic trainer down in the seven five seven. Um, um, you could you could you could go on my website. Um, www.wolfpacktraining.co not com but dot co wolfpacktraining.co wolfpacktraining.co I highly recommend Dustin he gets results and we're going to talk about some of his kids and what they did this week uh, any other platforms Dustin where they can find you, um, you know, phone number Twitter. you put your phone number up yeah 757-818-5546 um, you can reach me at Instagram at Peninsula Kid seven five seven, um, at on my Twitter as well at Peninsula Kid seven five seven, and my TikTok is Wolfpack Trainer seven five seven. I mean, that sounds my good. Make sure we get his phone number up there. Yep, I I will put that on the screen. Thanks, Dustin. All right, uh, let's go ahead on and start out with our preview of the game. So we had two semifinals in each class. Kirk, why don't you go ahead on it and get us through these? Uh, and, and we had some exciting games. We had a couple of upsets, but we also had one of our professional pickers 
I don't know if you know, you can guess who go 12 and 0 this week to try to well, catch well. me, who's the overall leader. But I'm not scared to take chances. All right. Yeah. All right, Jason, so- 12 and 0. So remember that as we go through these picks. Let's go. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the last week's games and we're going to debrief um, seven of them. But we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we'll transition into uh, previewing all six state championships in football in the VHSL. So class one, <clears throat> um, Essex defeated Alta Vista 16 to eight. All of us picked Essex. All right. The other semifinal, uh, Galax, high scoring game, as we expected, beat Honeaker 49 to 36. And Mr. Jason Sterling picked Galax, i.e., he was perfect last week. We he's the only one, right? Yeah, he's the only one. All, the rest of us picked uh, Honeaker. So that was class one. Now, class two, um, Riverheads defeated Pocosin 37 to 7. Pocosin had to get a Stanton. Uh, all of us had Riverheads. Had a couple guys uh, say, look out for Pocosin. And then uh, in the other semifinal, Radford defeated Graham, the generals, um, the G-men, 22 to 10 to set up um, state championship. All right, so moving to three, um, as expected, Liberty Christian defeated William Campbell 49 to 6. And 7-5-17, Lafayette defeated Brentsville. 17 to 7. I predicted Brentsville. Everybody else had Lafayette. So we wanted to take a quick minute. Jay, Rusty, we talked about Brentsville all year. Great season came to an end. Uh, and then our man Dustin Johnson knows a lot about Lafayette. And we're going to be pre- previewing that Lafayette Liberty Christian game. Uh, a quick question I have for you guys was um was Caleb uh, Alexander, was he uh, available for that game? No. Oh. no. No, and, and that's all I was going to say. Look, congratulations to Brentsville, Coach Long Wright, and all of those those players in that program that have, I mean, from the, the guys that are seniors have overseen the most successful um, four years in Brentsville history, and and some of the best in Prince William County history. You know, not a lot of teams win states, so the you know, and that's special. But to make it to the semifinals is is amazing three you know three years in a row um but i do believe you know if if caleb had been healthy i think especially by the score i think they could have taken uh lafayette could have made a difference yeah though. but caleb doesn't play defense well, right. but they only scored seven points and, they, and well, but look i know i know but but they but brinsfield only scored seven and held lafayette to 17 like if Caleb's healthy, they're putting up 25 points, 20, 30 points. So, so what about the players that that might be missing that you don't know about? Yeah, yeah. That, well, Where? speak up. You don't know, but it, you know it is a good point. I mean, I'm sure I, people. No, because I do know Lafayette missing Lafayette missing one player via suspension who starts that cornerback who could have stopped your homeboy Caleb from scoring. So, like I said, but but every action is a reaction. So. You know, we just go and leave it. Well, look, it they all picked Lafayette, Lafayette, so I'm standing by the excuse because Caleb didn't play. I was wrong. So it, it is it is important, though, because Caleb is the heart and soul of that team. He is a leader. He's a great kid. Um, and, you know, he is a dynamic. It would have made a difference, Dustin. It's all hypothetical now because we're moving on. We're going to see Lafayette face Liberty. Yeah, and, 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 he's, and, and, and the quarterback position is has become such a key key position in high school football but with these spread offenses um they also have a good running back and good, really good running game but when you don't you don't have that when somebody can focus on nico um orlando and you don't have that same threat um you know you, you've got uh, uh caleb who's a two-time region player of the year so he's he's an impact player he, he yeah. really does make a difference so we're, we're we got some games we're going to d- dig into. So let's yeah, move yeah. on to class four, and we're going to go over first uh, one of the most anticipated matchups in the whole state. King George went down to Darlin Stadium and faced the Phoebus Phoebus Phantoms. Phoebus won twenty five to thirteen, and I believe this game was uh, 
Was King George leading at the half? I believe they were, right, Dustin? Yeah, it was it was uh it was 13 to 12. King yeah, 13 George to 12. Leading at the half. Right. It was so, actually 13 to 12 after they were still no, it was a different score, but they were leading still going into the fourth quarter, right? That's correct. Um, yeah. No, yeah. They, mm, yeah, they was leading going into the fourth quarter. You they right. was yep. leading at the this, end of the third. Yeah, so this was a game that King George – Keep score early in the uh, third, and then they scored again. Yep. So, a couple things here. Um, Rusty, you got a lot of attention because you said that you did not know if the – the DBs, the defensive backs from uh, Phoebus could handle the King George wide receivers and that Jordan Bass wasn't walking um, through the door. I think they took that as motivation. And I know Dustin trained some of those kids. But before, Dustin, we let you get your say, I do want to say one thing. We all said that Phoebus had not faced a team this tough. And I do believe that is the case. Um, Dustin, What's your take on that game and how Phoebus was able to overcome those two great receivers? Um, I mean, first of all, I want to take my hat off to Coach Blunt for for coming up with the game plan. Um, I, I don't think he gets enough credit for um the the the, the football mind that he has. Um he does have good talent, you know, uh, the talent is rich, but to put the game plan together for those two guys in place to not just two, it was three, because number six is the great slot receiver who is um, – he, he he has high production as well. But I think Jeremy came in the game understanding what they was trying to do. And I think, you know, my, my conversation, because I, I had the privilege and the honor to work with a lot of those guys, um, especially in the secondary, and I told them all week, like, as long as y'all talk and communicate – we going you just be good. Just talk to each other. Call out routes. Somebody come across, send them off. Pass them to the next man. And um, being physical, putting their hands on those guys, they were big and strong. But they never faced the type of physicality, physicality that they faced when they came to Dallas Stadium. And um, I think that kind of separated um, Phoebus from all the opponents that they played. No, I am not going to take away at all from what Phoebus accomplished. I, I'll say this, though. It's not demeaning to say that two four-star athletes who have dominated the last three years are going to do well, okay? That's not that's not taking away anything from them. And, and what I mean by that is every week we watch college professional athletes, defensive backs do get burnt. Big play receivers make big plays. Like, it doesn't matter if you say, oh, this is a D1 athlete. And this is no, at every level, there are schemes and there are plays and there are mistakes. So it's not to necessarily to, 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 to say that the other kids aren't good football players and they aren't Division One football players because Division One football players burn other Division One football players. But what I was, I was impressed with how well they play. I thought to me two things, and I say this on, uh, on, on a couple of replies, I said, the King George quarterback looked shook. He looked the most frazzled. Like, I, he was throwing the ball in the dirt. He was looking nervous. Throwing, he, he had a couple, I think, intentional groundings. I haven't seen him play all year. I know those receivers can do work, but he looked like he was frazzled and couldn't get it to him. And the yeah, other but- thing I'll say is this. That turf – looks like it's made for Phoebus' style of play. Now, I know y'all don't control that they don't have the turf field, the turf will be installed later, but playing on that grass does not allow for the same speed that most of the teams that they play against play on turf. I mean, and King King George plays on and plays teams on turf I don't probably think that all year. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Uh, nope. You no, don't turf. think speed, you, you don't think a power uh, game Wait, 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 you don't think I don't think wait, it made a difference in the you're game. You're telling me you don't think the turf matters. Hold on, Mr. Rusty, Mr. Rusty, Mr. Rusty. Yes. Hold on, hold on. We're talking football. Right? Yes. Hold on. You te- so you can't make no excuses for guys that got four stars. They should be able to play on any surface. Right or wrong. If I got four stars by my name, but I if you are play on any hold, surface, right? But if you're not used to playing Mr. Rusty, 
on it was raining and it's a horrible turf. You're not going and you don't do that. That doesn't matter how many stars you got. I don't think it's a horrible you turf. That's, that, that's it's just the color of it. You still ain't mentioned the reason why the reason why uh, uh King Joe, you haven't mentioned the pass rush for Phoebus. You yeah, know, I know. So ready to. Oh, I was no, no. You going so hard on the King George quarterback, not not understanding what he was faced against up front. He went against the best defensive in tandem in the state. No, no, no. There's no in no. tandem like Dustin. Dustin, Dustin I said favor. he was frazzled, but that was talk because about, of the, the the pass rush. Talk about that. Talk about the pressure, Justin, because or Dustin, because we were not there. I mean, uh, look, I give I give big respects and praise to the secondary. They played an excellent game. They was ready, but. I got to give praise to the pass rush up front. Oh, yeah. That, that quarterback could not get comfortable. He had no pocket to step up in. He's yep. not mobile, so he can't move the pocket. He can't step outside. So th those receivers didn't have time to get open. Right. They no, couldn't get no, no moment. Even if they had time to get open, the quarterback couldn't find him because he was scrambling. He was frustrated. Hey, Mr. Rusty, the, the points that King George scored, was because Phoebus was was they scored on a, a punt that they didn't score didn't, on offense. They didn't score right. on offense. They, they, they didn't they score on offense. Score right. no points on, they scored on a muff punt field goal. Like Phoebus controlled the game for real. Mm -hmm. King George points. King George points was because of Phoebus mistakes. They didn't. They didn't produce nothing on offense for real. I'm being real. They didn't. But I'm. But like I said, all props to Phoebus. They Florida won the game. Hold on, Phoebus quarterback is a Phoebus quarterback is a freshman and produced in the same type of conditions. Make it make America's sense. Banks. America's banks, yeah. I mean and, and make it make sense. he produced in the same a freshman produced in the same type of conditions. So all right. that excuse, I don't really get into that. We talking football. I do facts, not feelings. So I want to <laughs> point out that the overall expectation from Jay and Jason was that Phoebus was going to win and the defense would be the major factor. And Phoebus stepped up, and Coach Blunt did have a great game plan. More importantly than the game plan, he had the kids ready. He had the kids ready for a big contest. And, um, you know, moving on, he's got to guard against the letdown because they've got to go to uh, Liberty University in Lynchburg and face a good Salem team. And we're going to do a preview of that game but speaking of Salem, Salem came up here to Leesburg and played a very good Tuscarora team. I just spoke with one of the Tuscarora players like an hour ago. It was 31-21. Peyton Lewis, I think, had 350-plus yards. He had a couple 70-yarders. Yeah, 375. Um, yeah, and that was the key. They ran a lot of wildcat. They ran it. They ran it. They ran it. They ran it at Tuscarora and, and, and just overcame it. Um, now, Jay, you had Tuscarora which not, not a bad pick, and it was a 31-21 game. Um, I just think that uh, Tuscarora had not seen a team like that. Um, I think they were able to make some uh, adjustments. It's just that uh, uh, the it was Jonah Aloha who plays um, defensive end, great kid. He said they just miscontained. They miscontained right. over and over again. And, and Dustin Johnson got to let the Phoebus because that kid coming out of the backfield, a, wait a minute, I oh, saw it. Yeah, they did miscontain, but he also made people miscontain. Mm -hmm. oh, like yeah. he yeah. had a good line, but he was running through people, he was juking people, and then once he got loose, he is the fastest athlete in the state of Virginia. He had the fastest hundred yep. classes, didn't matter in the state of Virginia in the states last year. So he 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 he, he helped make it hard for, for them. Yeah. Yeah, and um, you know Chris Cole, I believe, was a factor on defense, and then you know that Wildcat. They were running that Wildcat a lot, running straight out of it. Um, you know, it was a tie. I believe it was a tie game at half, wasn't it, uh, Jason? Tie game at half. I think it was fourteen all or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I believe yeah. it was. And um, um, it, it, you know, it was um, Salem. Salem just prevailed, and uh, they earned a trip to Liberty. Um, to face Phoebus, I uh, I want to congratulate Tuscarora, you know, and um, Coach Toller's second year uh, state semifinals, and yep. they've got uh, you know they're losing some key kids, Fletcher Westfall, Jonah Aloha, Tommy Petey, but um, 
got a great player back in uh, Dawson Pugh and um, Lucas Love, number 75. So they got a bright future. They've got a great tradition there. So we're obviously, you know, we're going to talk about Salem more, but congratulations to Tuscarora on a great year. Um, moving on to Class 5, this is another one that obviously we've got some intelligence here with Stonebridge beating Matoka. All four of us had Stonebridge. That was a 21-10 game. Uh, Jason, let us know what happened in that game. Yeah, I think they, Stonebridge did exactly what they wanted to do. They got their ground game going. They had they probably got pretty much equal carries between Troy Marquez and Tyson Miller. Yeah, uh, I think I think Pena only threw probably eight or nine passes in the game, yeah. um, and they really didn't have to go to the air attack. The thing that impressed me the most, and I'll talk about it a little bit when we preview them, they shut down Matoka's running game. Matoka's yeah. a very yeah. pass happy team, so they we knew they would force them into that. And I'll tell mm -hmm. you, Matoka's got a couple of really good receivers. Those two juniors, uh, yep. Dylan Newton Short and Bryce Yates, very impressive. They're both big kids. I think Bryce Yates is probably about six two and a half, six three. Newton Short's probably about six two. They gave Stonebridge some trouble at times, but they were able to at least get them off the field. Um, and, and Stonebridge, they, you know, they just had a little too much for them in this game, man. But uh, Matoka had a very impressive season. You know, I don't want to discount what those guys did. Uh, Fred Stutes, he's only in his second or third year at the, at the helm of Matoka. And to get those guys through that region into a regional, uh, through a regional championship and into a state semifinal, I think is to be commended. They're pretty young outside of the quarterback position. So I think they'll be back in that position again. I really like what Matoka did. They travel very well, by the way. Very good team, very respectful team. Stonebridge just had a little too much in the running game for them, guys. Yeah, hey, and they were, they're strong on the edge, that that recruit. Caleb uh, Williams. Yeah, Caleb Williams, got... very, very good player, man. He's uh, – when, when you couldn't get by him. He he moved very good laterally. So on, when Stonebridge would – Stonebridge ran better up the middle than they did to the edge. Yeah. Because he, he, he was able to take one edge away. Mm-hmm. Okay. What was yeah. close to that, Dustin? Oh no, are those two receivers play on about seven or seventeen. Yeah, they're good. They're good kids, man. They can play. Uh, they, 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 they definitely, they definitely, they are as advertised. Yeah. Dylan, yeah. Dylan is a, a, a superior athlete on on the basketball court and on the football field. Um, Bryce, definitely great route runner. I, I had the privilege to coach those guys on my seven or seventeen. But I was just my bad. D Dustin, they got. They, they went both ways, and they probably – I don't think either one of them came off the field on anything uh, snap-wise. I think they even played special teams, man. Um, so commend those guys because they were uh, – they might have been their number one and number two leading tacklers as well. So Wow. So that was – Jason, was that Mickey's – Coach Thompson's 17th semifinal or 16th? That was his 16th, 16th. semifinal game, his 12th win. How many finals is this? Maybe be 12. Yeah. It'll, be, it'll be a 12th one at Stonebridge. 12 finals in 22 Four years. years. 24 years. So 50% of the time. Every other year he's... going to the state championship. That's correct. Wow. Now, we're going to transition to the next game, which we all we all called Mari. Mari beating Indian River, 55 to nothing. Dustin, tell us about that because from what I hear, Mari is cranking now. The kid Ari Watford is balling. Stonebridge, not a good time for Mari to be hitting on all cylinders. Dustin, just give us a debrief on that because I know you heard a lot. And you too, uh, In all honesty, um, I have a great deal of respect. Number one, I'm going to do what my gentleman did, uh, Mr. Jason. I'm going to shout out Indian River for a great season. They beat a, a good green run team last week. Yep. Um, with a power offense who was undefeated. Um, they came in the Mori game. You know, um, kind of unmatched. Um, I think the defensive end for um, Indian River, he's one of the best in the state. I forget his name. Um, great, great. He got about 24, 25 sacks. Yep. Wow. Superior defensive end. Um, but Maury, from top to bottom, depth, coaching, I, as of the, I, me personally, you know, from what they have accomplished, beating Wise in D.C., beating Highland Springs, beating Dinwiddie, you know, um, beating Gonzaga in the scrimmage, you know, kind of had, uh, you know, a close scrimmage with Phoebus, kind of got got the, got the uh, uh, short nod versus Phoebus. I don't think no team is more battle-tested um, and 
you know, uh, um, is equipped with talent from top to bottom in the state with depth. I think if, if I had to pick a team to represent our state, move playing with somebody else in the state, I would have to go with more just from what I've seen, X's and O's, you know, not being biased, not non-biased, just the, the, the kids, they got a great team, man. And and, and they, they played a lot of great teams and they're battle tested and, you know, they get better every week. That's one thing people don't pay attention to. Some teams, you know, get do just enough to win. They get better every week and they play good talent since they got in the playoffs and before every game that they got the, the pick to win, like to play in, you know, in the beginning of the season, they picked teams that were good. They didn't duck yeah. no talent, and 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 they won. So, yeah. um, I, I think Maury, man, they dominated from start to finish. It was forty-two nothing before halftime, like it was versus Ward. This is the second game in a row they put up forty points before the half. Um, they rocking and rolling, man. They they just play with a lot of energy. They're great on special teams. They don't get enough credit for special teams. I think Maury ran back kickoffs, you know, um, in the last four to five last games. You know, um, they got great speed. They're very disciplined. Everybody does their job, you know. I mean, I, I, they just, they dominate. Yeah, that's expected. And, and I just put to all you guys, we're going to do a part one, which is going to be the review of the semifinals. Part two will, will be uh, our picks. But little teaser, we got to split decision here on if Maury and Freedom Woodbridge faced each other. We got differing opinions there. We'll talk about that in part two. Uh, so that that wraps up five. And uh, six went as expected. Um, seems like we had kind of a chippy contest uh, down at East Richmond off of Airport Road. Um, a lot of people were watching the video on this one. Highland Springs took out Lake Braddock as we expected. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not rusty. No, I was just, you took my thunder, Jay. Okay. Except Mr. Bird, like he uh, he was Phoebus. So Rusty picked them 31 to 28. Highland Springs took care of Lake Braddock 35 to 10. And it looks like they are starting. Uh, to roll. Jason, I know you've got some G2 on this one. I mean, what is your take on that game? Yeah, I'm not not surprised at the result. I think I sort of, you know, thought it would thought it would end up there. Um, little surprised at the chippiness, which, you know, from everything we're hearing, not, I don't want to get too deep into it. A lot of that came from the Lake Braddock side, uh, which, you know, it if, you know, it was over the line, that's obviously disappointing, but uh, it's a competitive game. I think we all understand that. So, uh, look, Highland Springs is you know, Warren Johnson every year puts it together and puts a championship product on the field. That's what he does. And, uh, you know, guys, we've been waiting on, uh, I think for two years, you know, dreaming of uh, a freedom uh, Highland Springs game. And uh, we're going to see it in about six days. So something, uh, yeah. something to behold. I don't yeah. care if I was in an airport with a little tiny 12 inch TV, I'd find a way to watch that game. So. Yeah. yeah. And before, before we go on to freedom and uh, James Madison, I would, I would just say this, you know, sometimes doing the right thing is very hard. Yes. Tempers are high, you know, a lot's on the line and not everybody sees all the moving parts. Sometimes it's, it, it, it's hard to take the high road. So I would think for Lake Braddock as well as Highland Springs and all the other teams, you know, this is an opportunity that you, you know, you really find leadership, and keeping your poise comes in those key moments. And uh, as you get older, you realize that more. But, you know, I was going to say that, Kirk. I mean, it, you know, at age 17, it's hard, 18, whatever, 16, 17, yeah. 18. It's, you know, your decision making, we all, we all know, you know, it's not the best, right? And yeah. I think, you know, if, if any of the kids were over the line and it sounds like some were, you know, I think in 10 years, they're going to look back on it and be like, man, I was, right. I was such an idiot doing that, you know? Yeah. And the thing is, is that, you know, people are young and, and, and you know, things are set. It's just an opportunity to everybody to just say, hey, maybe this weekend coming up, we got six games and maybe some things are done and said that not everybody sees. But, you know, doing the right thing uh, is always. So important. it's, it's you know, again, it goes back to being being 17, 18 years old. You're emotional and you don't know what was said in the trenches, but it's it's that's how it goes. Just and for some people, like if you're a senior and this is your last game and you lost and you lost that way. And somebody says, I mean, 
it, it can happen. Now, it did not get too out of hand. It's unfortunate that it happened, but I'm just glad it didn't escalate. I think, again, Coach Lauren uh, Johnson, outstanding coach. His his players know they have much more to lose than a Lake Braddock player. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, hats off to 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 them and 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 congratulations if i'm not mistaken this is the best that team advanced i think this is the most successful or the furthest lake braddock high schools ever advanced they had a great season they did not expect to and that coach didn't say that but he said yeah. kind of rebuilding we're young hey so they have a lot to look forward to and 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 i think you know i would i'm sure they too think this was a great season Everybody was calling for, um, South for County. what we're going to get. What well, we're saying, South County or even Madison. So let me let me just say this: we crit. I will say this here: we criticize the VHSL a lot, and that is appropriate because some things just don't make sense. Kind of like the college football playoffs, you know? <laughs> but uh, oh. the four teams that came out. Whole another episode, but I just want to say this. I'm giving props to the VHSL for allowing this for changing, going back to what they had done years before, and allowing the regions to match up differently for the state finals. So I think this, we, we talk about them a lot. We have problems, but I'm going to say, hey, you, you, I think you guys got this right. And, and this is the matchup people wanted and deserve to see. But it's also just how it should be. Every year it should rotate. They're going to be facing uh, the Freedom Eagles, who handily took care of Madison. Um, this was not a surprise. 55-14. to 14. Jay, you were at that game. Tell us about that game. You know, I feel bad for Coach Counts. Look at the last three years. He faced a superstar Oscar Smith team. Yeah. Last year he faced the you know a same freedom great team, and this year, um, another great freedom team. Um, it wasn't even close. I mean, it was just total domination. I don't know why these kids cannot tackle Jeff Overton. I mean, he's not you know he's not huge. Uh, he's a great runner, but the last four games people just could not tackle him. Um, maybe because he's good. Huh? Maybe because yeah, well, good. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, well look at look at Tony Dorset. Tony Dorset or you know Walter Payne. They're, they're you know be, be taken down. Or Barry Sanders. But he's running through extremely big holes also because against um Yeah, yeah week before. I mean that, that game that I went to, um, those were some big holes. I mean he was and, and I am taking nothing from Jeff Overton or any of the quarterbacks they've had, but over the last Eight years, freedom with with Felton, with Overton. They've had some outstanding running backs. So, but one of the key things I think is consistent is it's a great offensive line. Not taking away from any of the backs, but like you said, those holes are big. But they give great value, like a Phoebus, to their offensive and defensive lines, which make other people look let me, good. Let me add one more thing for the quarterback, Tristan Evans. He broke the state record for touchdown yep. pass. Yep. He passed Philip Sims. What blows my mind is he has no offers yet. I don't, I don't, you know, I know it's the height is an issue, but hopefully a college will come around and say, you know, let's, let's give a guy a chance and he'll play. Yeah. He'll play. Even if he has to do a preferred walk on, he'll play. And and the other thing, Jay, is there the, the size was big because I had said if a big team, a big athletic team goes up against Madison, they got trouble and size was a factor. What did Jay? There's one lineman for, for Madison that maybe weighed 160 pounds, a lineman. So yeah. they, they just it was, it was, it wasn't close. They, they just dominated offensively, defensive line, O line, Jeff Overton, Evans Trujillo. It was just total domination. At halftime, it was like 41 to nothing at the half. So yeah, yeah. yeah. it was it was, it was, it was no, no challenge. I think yeah. Madison can take pride in the fact that. That they're losing to one of the probably the best ten to fifteen teams in the history of the VHS mm-hmm. VHSL. Well, last three history. years, the last three years. Yeah, yep. I mean, Absolutely. yeah, it's that bad luck. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so that wraps it up for classes one through six. 
you know, obviously all the uh, state semifinalist teams that uh, lost great season. A lot of people would trade places with you. And we're excited to talk about um, some history uh, in part two of this. And that's the fact that uh, Phoebus is looking to do something that only Hampton has done. That's a little nugget. We're talking about statistically over a period of time, the most state championships. And then uh, what is that? Right. When was the what year was the first one for Phoebus? Yeah. Oh, one. So they didn't win any in the 90s? I no, thought they were. No, they didn't wow. win. One. They should have won it in 87. Not 87? That's when JC Hall beat them in the semifinal. Oh, that's Look. right. Okay. Okay. Uh, but and I thought they got one in, or two in the 90s. Nope. Oh, wow. No. Wow. No. That was okay. uh, Hampton still had their number, right? Right, Dustin? Yeah, yeah, we took that. We took that throne from uh, Queen Street. We brought it down out of the street. Yeah, when I was in sophomore high school and we won my junior year. Hampton won four in a row in the nineties. Yeah, uh, 95, 96, oh. 98. Ronald yeah. Curry right. years, right? Nine. Okay. All Dustin, right, so what, what, what? Did, were you on that very first championship yep. team? Yes, yeah, sir. Outstanding. Yeah. Hey, look, man, and, and you know, I, I, I'm like you. I'm gonna be. I'm going to give my analysis. I'm going to keep some stuff real. And uh, I got none but love for my PD. Look, I appreciate when not just you, but all the folks out there that, that, that gave, you know, feedback, you know, before and after the game. And I want to shout out a few people. I just want to say, look, Noah Jefferson brought, you brought it. Okay. I was very proud of the way you played and the folks out there that, 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 that were like, Hey, you said this, you said that, but look, I'm going to tell you like, you got to show me. Right? America's his know, father, too. I know. Yeah, I know Jordan Bass was a beast. But, like, I, and, you, and nobody's going to sit here and tell me that the PD is not down and probably about seven of the teams can't score. So, you, you but when, when it came time, y'all came through. And, and that was a high-powered offense. Um, and I can say all the stuff about the turf. Um, and all whatever the weather, I think those are factors. But y'all won, and I'm I'm very happy for you. Keep keep bringing them titles to the ham to ham to Hampton, not not just to Hampton Rose, but to Hampton. And right. and Dustin, thanks for joining us, man. Like you bring so much insight. Uh, you know, having you not just be able to talk about, you know, you from your experience as a player, as a coach, but you're right in there with these athletes on multiple great programs in the state of Virginia. So I, I appreciate that, bro. You bring mad credentials to this show. And and, and, and try and keep me in check. You know, that's what we need. Uh, you know, you just, you know, you my guy, Mr. Rusty, big respect. Um, I just think, you know, you were just kind of speaking from a perspective not quite being down here, understanding. Um, I just want to give one other shout out, two other, excuse me, um, Ricardo Underwood, the corner, and Najee Gay. I think I spoke about number 14. If you go watch mm -hmm. the film, he laid a lot of hits. He was coming down. He was he was, he was, was tackling. He was covering. Um, he had a couple breakups. He was lined up with him in the slot a couple times. Um, he held his own. Um, he was everywhere he needed to be. He's a uh, he's an underdog type of kid. Doesn't get a lot of uh, 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 notoriety, just like Mr. Jay Carlson said about the quarterback at Freedom. I don't know why he doesn't have any offers as well, but you know that's another story for another day. Um, he's a, a part of the secondary as well, um, you know. And and of course, Keontae, great player of the year. You know, he does what he does, Trent. But uh, those ki those kids are just ready, man. You know. So moving right along. Great, great defensive backs. But again, I also like. Those big nasties bringing that pressure and that that defensive line stops the run, but it puts pressure on. And 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 got to give those guys credit because that they 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 brought it. They really brought it with their extra long cleats for the mud. <laughs> All right, thank you, Dustin, for joining us and for my co-host Kirk Kilier. This has been the Kirk and Burr Show as we just reviewed. The state semifinals. Stay tuned because we're going to come back. Games classes one through six. We're going to preview the championship. So